In ancient Greece, the town of Eleusis, situated west of Athens, became the most important religious center of the pagan world during its time. According to the old belief and narrations in Homeric hymn, Demeter, goddess of agriculture, stopped to rest at Eleusis during her quest for her daughter, Persephone, who was kidnapped by Hades. There, Demeter ordered a temple and altar to be built in her honor. After the joyful reunion of the goddess with the missing Persephone, she instructed the leaders of Eleusis in how to perform her rites. The cult, then, is believed to have been taught directly by Demeter herself. The Eleusian mysteries were initiations held every year in ancient Greece based on the myth of Persephone, daughter of Zeus and Demeter, who was also the goddess of spring, who in her youth spent her time among blooming flowers and fruit trees. She was admired for her beauty and graceful movement, when one day, while collecting wreaths and lilies with her friends, the nymphs, Hades, the god of the underworld, fell in love and kidnapped her from the land of the living on his chariot, forcing her to be his bride and making her his queen. Her mother, Demeter, goddess of the harvest and fertility, searched for her for nine days and nights after the abduction with torches lit in her hands, leaving no stone unturned. However, in the process, she neglected to fulfill her job. Crops and plants all over the world began to die. The leaves fell from the trees and the ground became barren. Things were looking bleak and in order to save mankind, the gods knew they would have to intervene, so demanded that Hades let her go. Determined not to lose his queen completely, Hades tricked her into eating some pomegranate seeds, as those who eat from the depths of hell must always return. As a compromise, Persephone would return to earth for six months of the year. Demeter, being delighted at the return of her daughter, was able to return to her work. Crops began to grow, flowers bloomed, and the leaves returned to the trees, giving, of course, the seasons. In the months that Persephone is on earth, Demeter, the goddess of earth and vegetation, blooms and blesses everything from her joy, while in the months that Persephone leaves for the underworld, all the fruits of the people wither, mourning like the goddess Demeter from her sorrow. The mysteries that centered around this myth refers to the mystery of life, death, and life after death and involved a cycle with three phases, the descent or loss, the search, and the ascent, with the main theme being the ascent or resurrection of Persephone and the reunion with her mother. It is the constant cycle of life from the wilting and mourning of the barren land to the rebirth of vegetation and fruitfulness. It is the cyclical change that occurs in everything inside and outside of us. The ceremonies involved elaborate, prolonged orgies that infused the people with joy, upliftment, and happiness, while teaching the inhabitants the cultivation of wheat and honoring the cycles of nature. The rituals allegedly infused the crops with fertility, while ushering in a new generation of citizens. The esoteric aspect of the initiation had to do with the energetic transmutation of sex energy and secrecy regarding the sacred internal alchemy was strictly enforced. Although its origins were said to have come from the time of Atlantis, resurfacing as a Minoan cult where Demeter was allegedly a poppy goddess who brought the poppy from Crete to Eleusis. It was a major festival during the Hellenic era, later spreading to Rome, representing the cycles of nature with the annual celebrations and rituals lasting uninterrupted for 2,000 years. Anyone had a chance to attend the mysteries, rich or poor, even slaves, but the rule was that you could only go once in your entire life and you were sworn to silence. Similar religious rites appear in the agricultural societies of the Near East, with the rites, ceremonies, 
and beliefs kept secret and consistently preserved from antiquity. For the initiated, the rebirth of Persephone symbolized spiritual immortality, the idea that all is connected and eternal, the embodiment of the axiom, know thyself. How can one describe as other than oneself that which, when one saw it, seemed to be one with oneself? This is no doubt why, in the Eleusian Mysteries, we are forbidden to reveal them to the uninitiated. to the powerful transformation that the initiates experienced in the course of the Lucian Mysteries was the sacred potion Kaikion, which had psychoactive properties capable of inducing visions of the afterlife so powerful that it changed the way participants saw the world and their place in it. They were freed from the fear of death through the recognition that they were immortal souls temporarily in mortal bodies. The beverage was said to have been infused with honey, barley, the fungus ergot, which is like LSD, and or other hallucinogens, such as psilocybin mushrooms, after which the initiates were taken to an underground theater where the secret part of the ritual took place. This part of the rite was said to involve a symbolic reenactment of the death and rebirth of Persephone, giving the initiate confidence to face death and a promise of bliss in the dark domain of Hades. Whatever happened in the Testarion, those who entered in would come out the next morning radically changed. Similar psychedelic substances and tantric rituals were performed in the Bacchanalia, and according to some reports, the wines used in the Dionysian rituals had to be diluted three to twenty times, and just three cups of it, quote, brought some initiates to the brink of insanity. That said, in order to participate in the greater mysteries, the initiates were required to have gone through the preliminary part of the ritual, which involved fasting and purification. Plato, who was an initiate of the mysteries, mentioned it in his dialogue on the immortality of the soul, the Fido, saying that, quote, our mysteries had a very real meaning. He that has been purified and initiated shall dwell with the gods. Plutarch, also an initiate, wrote that, quote, because of those sacred and faithful promises given in the mysteries, we hold it firmly and for an undoubted truth that our soul is incorruptible and immortal. In the giant initiation hall in Eleusius, more than 3,000 neophytes at a time experienced powerful psychoactive spiritual transformation from 2,000 consecutive years until the Christian emperor Theodosius interdicted participation in the mysteries and all other pagan cults. The cultural importance of these mysteries for the ancient world and their yet unacknowledged role in the history of European civilizations becomes evident when we realize that there were many famous and illustrious figures of antiquity among the initiates. The list of neophytes included the philosophers Plato and Aristotle, as well as Emperor Marcus Aurelius, and the Roman statesman and philosopher Marcus Cicero. Among the many exceptional and divine things your Athens has produced and contributed to human life, Nothing is better than those Eleusian mysteries, for by means of them we have been transformed from a rough and savage way of life to the state of humanity, and have been civilized. Just as they are called initiations, so in actual fact we have learned from them the fundamentals of life, 
and have grasped the basis not only for living with joy, but also for dying with a better hope. The specifics of the consciousness expanding procedures involved in these secret rites have remained, for the most part, unknown to modern academia, however survived in the various mystery schools of the Orient and those brought into Europe by the Knights Templar and kept alive by the medieval alchemists. In the book, The Immortality Key, The Secret History of Religion with No Name, author Brian Mureresco says, Though we are liable to forget Western civilization was not founded as a Christian enterprise, the ancient Greece that invented democracy and birthed all the arts and sciences we now take for granted never heard of Jesus. Before Jerusalem, before Rome, before Mecca, there was Eleusius. If Athens of the 5th and 4th centuries BC was the true source of Western life in the 21st century, then Eleusius was our first undisputed spiritual capital. The word mystery comes from the Greek muo, which literally means to shut one's eyes. Under penalty of death, all visitors of the Eleusian mysteries were explicitly forbidden from revealing what they saw on the inside. Whatever happened in Eleusius stayed in Eleusius. In its heyday, the temple attracted the best and brightest Athens had to offer, including Plato, to keep his experience classified the godfather of Western philosophy used vague, cryptic language to describe the blessed sight and vision he witnessed in a state of perfection, the climax of his initiation into the holiest of mysteries. Like all travelers, Plato was permanently transformed by whatever he observed in Eleusius. The latest in a long line of visionaries, men and women, with exclusive access to cosmic truths. Following their sip of an unusual elixir and a night of tantric spectacles in the temple, each pilgrim earned the honorary title Epoptes, which means something like the one who has seen it all. Beyond any doubt, they claimed, death was not the end of our human journey. We do, in fact, survive the physical body. And underneath this mortal clothing, we are all immortals in disguise, gods and goddesses destined to the stars for eternity. Aristotle once said, the initiates came to Eleusius not to learn something, but to experience something. One inscription found on the site says, quote, death is for mortals no longer an evil, but a blessing. Pindar, perhaps the greatest lyric poet of ancient Greece, and a fellow initiate wrote in the 5th century BC, quote, Blessed is he who has seen these things before he goes beneath the hollow earth, for he understands the end of mortal life and the beginning of a new life given of God. Like the mystics that would infuse Christianity, Judaism, and Islam in the millennia to come, the Greeks held the ancient esoteric belief of dying before dying, or being born again. The myth was studied by Carl Jung, who agreed with Voltaire that, quote, everything in life is reincarnation. That said, apart from the relationship between life and death, the myth has a lot to teach us about the mother-child relationship, where Demeter, as Mother Earth, the life-giving source, expresses an unconditional love which we also see expressed later in the Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist, 
My published work is available on Amazon and through all other major book outlets. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description. Please subscribe for future updates. Leave your thoughts below. Have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.